Hey, 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 good morning team. This is the February support group tape and it is being brought to you in February. <laughs> Yay. We're up here on top of the mountain. A bit cold today. <laughs> Not too bad, but a bit cold. Um, let's see, let me turn this on. Whoa, it's nine degrees. <laughs> so it's a bit brisk. The um, bells going off, things happening. It's snowing. The snow is pouring in. So um, actually it's snowing a, a fair amount. But not enough to create a problem, just enough to get wet. <laughs> so today, what will we talk about today? So today I decided to pick a couple good titles. Um, <clears throat> attachment, spelled with an A, and detachment, spelled with a D. They're things that happen within our lives where we get attachments to different concepts and different ideas and different things that come our way. And we have to know that, that when we get attachments, Things come with attachments, <laughs> such as expectations, sometimes disappointments, sometimes exhilaration, sometimes all sorts of feelings, or emotions, I should put it, that take us out of present time and project us into futuristic events. They allow us to start hoping and wanting things to go certain ways. Attachments gives us sometimes false securities within things. And what I've learned from attachments is to basically not have them. I've found that when you get attachments to things, you become trapped within certain ways of manifestation. And you begin to use certain things coming to you in such ways that they sometimes have a tendency to lock into you. And therefore, when something comes along and all of a sudden an attachment that you had, the attachment is taken away, you go, oh, wow, what am I going to do now? But the beauty of it is, is that if you have learned to not have attachments, that when things come up, you get to smile and you get to go, oh, wow, check it out. I don't have an attachment because I don't have an anticipation of something coming my way, which shows me once again that I'm hanging out in present time, which really works well. Now, I've been in the process of attaining a certain piece of property, and this piece of property has grown me tremendously in my abilities to see my divinity. I've observed the fact that I'm working on the Vanderbilt Ranch, and that I am doing things to bring this particular piece of property to me if it is what the Godhead so so chooses. Now as different things come along to to say hey Dennis here's a little support in the idea of working on the Vanderbilt Ranch I've noticed also that I have not gotten an attachment to the things that come my way because my affirmation has been and let it be God's way, which is the perfect thing because I've learned that things will come and go in the process of having events come that way. And you as an individual must learn to stay in present time. And regardless of what comes to you, you just keep right on smiling and right on grinning because the universe will never let you down. And it comes to trust and it comes to also letting go of things. Now, I've observed that as my energy goes towards different avenues, other energies are added to it and subtracted from it. And I've also observed that in the attachments and detachments, one must stay so in present time that it doesn't get caught in the flow, the natural flow. And by staying within the natural flow, when things change, you don't have a charge on it one way or another. It is just part of the growth.
And the beauty is that you can sit back and you can smile at it and share in the magnitude of the divinity which allows the divinity to take things and share things with you to encourage you and then use them somewhere else and show you that you shouldn't have an attachment because the truth of the matter is all of the things that come along will always go for the highest thought which could be another person another place another things idea of what is to be done and within all of this, the beauty is you don't have any buttons pushed because you really don't have the attachments. I've learned from these different things, and that's the excitement and the learning lessons that I get to share. See, I've learned that things always come and go. And to not have the attachments to it. The biggest thing that I learned from my parents is never count your chickens before the eggs hatch. And I've learned to use them. I've also learned that the energies that come from the universe are given to you in the moment to use, to strengthen yourself with, to grow with, and to share with others with. And that in any given moment in time, you have the ability to change and grow and share at any other different point because the universe is always growing and always changing and that within this changing and growing if you are truly in present time you never get disappointed you never get let down and it's always perfect because you have trusted in the Godhead not in your personality to produce this or do that, but you have trusted in the Godhead. And so I guess this tape is about trusting yourself um, and trusting God, but not to have an attachment or an anticipation to the way God is choosing to manifest things. As we grow, Sometimes things come along and, and give us those insights and give us those moments of sharing. And that's what we needed in those particular moments. And even though that sometimes these moments look like they're more of a long-term effect, hey, they're only for the moment in time that they're happening. And that we should see that and perceive that. And never get attachments to, well, this is the way this should go and this is the way that that should go. Because what I have taught all of us, and I, and I share this so wonderfully, is, is that we are creatures that deal with being in the moment. And things do come and change in the moment that takes us out sometimes of other commitments or other attachments or other things that are going on. And the beauty of being in the moment is being able to change even commitments so that our growth is continual. <laughs> I must interject a word here now. Um, it's starting to snow real heavy, so I'm battening down the hatches. Just hold one second. Yay, I'm back. <laughs> the snow is coming down, and it's purifying, and it's changing, and it's growing, the beauty of this planet. Just as we are growing from time to time to time. As we grow, sometimes we think that because we make certain commitments, we can't change them. And the truth of the matter is, we should be able to change at any given moment in time, regardless what our commitments may be. Because our commitment is to ourself, and it is also to our ability to be in present time, and it is also to our ability to be able to change as the universe dictates to us. See, sometimes we get caught in commitments and attachments where, oh wow, I've got this attachment, oh wow, I've got this commitment, and I should keep it, and I should do this, and I should do that. Well, shoulds are not necessarily the reality of things. At any given time in our realities, if things are to change, and if things are to grow, and if things are to support ourselves and our universe, we must be able to change and grow in this very instant. And commitments that we make, hey, if commitments are truly understood, they are also understood that they happen in the moment and they can be let go at any given time. And this is a very important thing, to be able to stay true to yourself and not worry about what people think or what people might say. 
Because if they are truly staying in present time, then you shouldn't have to worry about anything. Everything just moves along as it should. We get attachments sometimes to um, ideas. And we put all our energy into this idea. And sometimes what happens is, is that our ideas change. And we need to be able to change and grow with them. We need to be able to honor ourselves at all times and do the things that best serve us in this given moment. And sometimes these are things that bring about change and bring about insight. Now, I've learned in the process of buying the Vanderbilt Ranch that I also need to be able to change and be able to see what God really has in store for me. And that as people work to support me and work to um, inspire me in different ways, they also need to be able to grow and inspire themselves in so many different ways. And that commitments come and go and that what is really truth is staying in the moment in time as it comes. I have observed that <clears throat> without getting attachments to things, I have truly been able to allow the universe to serve me in such a way that that as long as I don't get too attached to things, it is always replacing things that I thought were solid, and yet it's always replacing them with more joy, more excitement, more ideas. And as long as Dennis doesn't try to hold on to things, or hold on to a picture, or hold on to a concept, I find that as things change in my universe, immediately right after changes, there's always more changes. And that if I, I try not to hold on to anything, that the changes are always clearer, uh, and more unique, and more helpful. And that certain times when things are coming my way, it's merely just to support me in those few moments and to give me a little boost in those few moments and then, hey, the universe uses things in other places. And they go, hey, we were just here to support you at this particular moment in time and it's perfect because you've strengthened yourself from this. You've learned from this. You have not learned to go into the future. You have taken the material. You have stayed in present time. You have grown with it. You have strengthened yourself with it. And now we as the universe need this somewhere else. And then things shift because the universe knows exactly what it is doing all the time and I honor that all the time and so when things change for me I let things go I have no attachments to them and I don't hold on to things I've observed that you just let go and the universe knows that by you letting go there's more room to bring other things to you and that the universe is always there and it never lets you down as long as you stay in present time because present time is all that there is and all of the other things if I hope this and I want for that and I wish this and I'm kind of kind of you know wanting other things hey those things will always change and you must be able to change with them if you wish to survive because if you don't you go oh no I've lost this and this is oh no what am I gonna do now what you're gonna do now is let go of things you shouldn't have had the attachment in the first place and if you see yourself whining and crying and complaining then hey you had attachments and they're not really what's serving you and you must be able to see the glory of the divine you know, it's sort of like, um, okay, here you are, you, you're, you're, you're getting a car, and, and you're working hard, and, and it's looking like it's coming together, and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, the bank says, gosh, we're really sorry, but we can't quite see this financial possibility for you here, and you go, oh, no, I had my heart set on this. No, 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 no. You just let it go, and you figure, hey, you know what, the universe has a better bank, or there's supposed to be a different car and the universe has just decided that in this moment in time and remember it's all based on you it's never outside of yourself so you're either checking out to see if you should try a new car or checking out to see that maybe this car was going to break down on you and you didn't need it or that you would have had troubles later on down the line with some sort of banking stuff or you know what 
You just trust that what the universe is constantly laying out to you in every moment in time is exactly perfect for you. Oh wow, I wasn't able to buy the dress that I really wanted and I'd been saving for it and I'd been working for it. Well hey, you know what? The dress that you were counting on was perfect in the inspiration of the time when you need it. But now it may look like that dress isn't coming your way and so what the heck? If it isn't coming your way, then something else must be. And if you don't have the attachment, if you don't try to hold on to the dress or the car or property or whatever it is that you're trying to get to, then you're free to receive more things and new things because the universe is always giving to you. It is always sharing with you. And as long as you are willing to receive, then you won't have any problems. I'm talking on detachment and uh, detachment because sometimes we in the world, we get our de ideas set and sometimes it's important to really let go of those ideas. And letting go of ideas is the best thing that we can be doing in present time. It shows us that we don't have those attachments, that what we have is a detachment for instance we can let go of things we don't have to count on things in our life and to such a degree that if they don't happen our world falls apart and all of a sudden hey you know what happens when your world falls apart when your world falls apart you start going into the past and you start whining about I should have done this I should have done that I could have done this I could have done that hey stay out of the past by staying out of the past, you'll, you'll notice that if you had too many attachments, then you were in the future. And that basically what you should be able to see from whatever lesson that, you know, we're learning from, it's, it's like, well, first of all, you were in the future because you had expectations and anticipations, which you shouldn't have had. And then when it didn't come your way, you go into the past, which means you're blaming and you're in guilt and you're doing all sorts of other things that may not have necessarily served you. And so the greatest gift that you can have is when things change in front of your world to show you that you really didn't have anticipations or expectations. And I guess the reason that I'm doing the talk now is because this is what I've learned for myself for the, for the day. You know, I've learned that all of a sudden certain, you know, ideas and concepts that were produced may not be proper for this moment in time. It may be needed that somewhere else in the universe things are required. And that your ease and how quickly you can let go of things is a sign of how together you are in present time. And I've discovered that I'm in pretty good shape here. I don't have attachments to things that I'm working on and I don't have expectations and what I've learned is is that the universe never really lets me down it will just keep bringing more and more valuable things to me because I don't have attachments to the old ideas and concepts and it's so fun to see ourselves growing it is so fun to see ourselves perceiving from present time and not going into any form of trauma regardless of what comes up based on the fact that you're trusting God's will. I want to keep working on this because sometimes I notice in workshops people really do get expectations and anticipations and sometimes at the end of the workshop if they don't you know feel what they if they don't feel, let me try it one more time, sometimes they feel that something should happen that they should be able to recognize. Something should be so profound that they should be able to see it like immediately. And I've learned that don't have those anticipations and don't have those expectations and just trust yourself in the universe and things work out a whole lot better. We work on projects and we have anticipations and expectations on projects. And I find that if you just know that as a divine being you're doing your absolute best and regardless of what the universe reflects back to you, you're all in present time and you're always learning, you will be so much happier.
Sometimes people expect different workshops to do different things, and then they get into this disappointment in the thing, the very thing that I'm teaching in the workshop, which is stay in present time and don't get attached to anything, but do God's will. Let God's will be done. Will be done. Um, I find that sometimes people have letdowns after the workshop because they didn't get what they thought they should have in that moment in time. Well, what they got in that moment in time was a look-see that they might have had an anticipation or an expectation. And by having that, because they're choosing to grow, the universe said, well, here, what we'll do is we'll show you that you shouldn't have this, an this expectation and this anticipation and that that and perhaps will be a clue to show you how to stay in present time. Or cars, you know, sometimes we work on cars. I have this car. Um, that I've really been working on getting rid of. And um, it's just sort of been hanging out and I haven't had time to get rid of it or change it or do anything with it. And so I just don't have any pictures like, oh, wow, I should be doing this. Oh, wow, I should be doing that. I know that it's in the timing, and so I just kind of hang out and know that the car will do what it needs to do when it needs to do it at any given moment in time that it can do that. And that just because I don't have a car and I should have this, you know, newer car means absolutely nothing to me because I don't have anticipations or expectations. It's perfect for right here and right now. And that makes me feel good. Or buying clothes, you know, to have new clothes or, or anything. I guess I'm trying to get such a broad span on anticipations and expectations of things so that we don't get disappointments and we don't get feelings of rejection or we don't get feelings of resentment because they are so easy to get if God doesn't give us what we want. Because if God didn't give you what you wanted, the problem is, is that your God is an intellectual concept. You see, if God doesn't give you what you wanted in the moment that you want it, then apparently you have got a picture of God. And if you have a picture of God, you're not really in the divinity. And the key is, is that you should be in the divinity. And if you're in the divinity, you should have no pictures of how it is to go. It doesn't matter when things come and go. It's not necessarily part of the gig. And as long as you don't have an attachment, you can truly see your divinity glowing and shining. Because in every given moment, you are happy. You're not bummed because you didn't get what you expected. You're not bummed because things that look like they were coming together didn't come together. When things don't happen the way you have pictures, and if you don't buy into it, you will find that you're just as happy whether the pictures come true or not. I find that in your personality you go, wow, I wonder what, ha what I did to deserve this. And the truth of the matter is, what you did was you loved God and you allowed God to manifest on a higher level what you truly need to see or to have happen. And that other people are manifesting on their highest level to support their divinity and they're trusting in their divinity because they are staying in present time and they are responding to the things that are important to them. And that the bottom line is, is everybody is working as the divine peace and as the divine whole. And when you are truly God, everything there is there to work for you. Everything. Now let's take our simple everyday examples of how it should be. You wake up in the morning. And all of a sudden, the ride that you normally get to work doesn't show up. And all of a sudden, we've got an, att an attachment. It's sort of like, well, what's the matter with these people? They were supposed to be here. They were supposed to be on time. They didn't show up. They made this commitment. What's going on? Instead of responding in that way, that's somewhat of a non-loving response. The way you should respond is, is, wow, I see they haven't made it today. Well... I guess it's time to see how I respond in present time. Do I have an attachment to a commitment? Commitment was made on the physical plane. Now, instead of just thinking that I've got this physical attachment or they, they didn't show up to take me to work, why don't I just check it out and go, you know what, I bet you God had a cleaner space or a better idea for me today. And that if I can learn to let go of attachments and anticipations to a ride, 
then maybe I'll be able to see what the higher thought of the day was, rather than going into blame and guilt and going into the past. And rather than bumming myself out and saying, wow, man, these people told me that they'd be here to pick me up and they're not, you don't go into the future. And what you do is you stay in present time and you check out what the divinity has to share with you. And what you might find is, is that you are just checking out yourself to see if you're really in present time for the day. Wow, what a fun thing. Okay, let's try another one. So-and-so is supposed to pick you up at a given time and you guys are going out in the afternoon to do shopping or this or that or the other thing. And what you discover is, is that the universe is checking to see um, how you're going to respond by not having the person show up on time. Something else came up for them and they must fulfill their truth for them. Now how are you going to deal with the truth for yourself? Are you going to stay in present time and say, wow, I love you God, I love you God, thank you for sharing this experience. Thank you for showing with me the things that I need to see. Thank you for showing to me that I have attachments to different things and that I need to let go of these attachments because in the attachment you see God, I'm making the attachment you, God. And because you as my God picture didn't get fulfilled, I'm going to be upset. But you know what God, I see a chance to see that the universe is totally falling into play and that it is doing each different thing that it needed to do and that I as a personality should just see the magnificence of the divinity that is being shown to me. Maybe something will come on television that's like a little more important than what I needed to do. Or maybe I'll take a couple minutes off and I'll meditate and I'll just thank God on how loving it is to show me that I should stay in present time. And that, you know what, maybe something would have happened if the couple of us would have been in the car together. And now that that person had something else to do that came up, and now that we see that it's a little late for us, and, and now we can change and go to a higher thought. Wow, what a beautiful way for the universe to show us that there was more. And so now we all get to grow in the light of the divine. And so we see how attachments have worked to pull us back into present time. So I'm going to shoot now over to the other side and we're going to continue with attachments. <laughs>